Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. Tonight in grade five in module three, we are working on our very first lesson of the module, lesson number one. And in lesson number one, we are making equivalent fractions with the number line, with the area model, and with numbers. So let's take a look at one of our problems. There's only problems on tonight's homework, and I don't know which one your teacher has assigned, but I'm gonna do problem number two with you, and then we'll see what other ones you've got for homework. Let's take a look at the directions here, because these are more complicated than our, our homework directions usually are. So use the folded strip to mark points zero and one above the number line, and zero fourths, one fourth, two fourth, and three fourths, and four fourths below it. Follow the same pattern as problem one, but with fourths. So I'm gonna assume that you've gotten problem one correctly. And I also, of course, ha cannot work with a folded paper strip. But let's go ahead and, and mark our points zero and one. Let's see, we're just gonna go ahead and make points here at each end, right? So I've got this whole big number line. I'm gonna mark this as zero all the way down to this as one. Now it says mark zero and one above the number line. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There's zero and there's one. And then, oh, I gotta have to, I have to mark some other points. Let's see, zero fourths, one fourths, two fourths, and three fourths, and four fourths below. Okay, so we're working in fourths. So let's see, if I divide it here, that would just be in halves. So I'm gonna need to divide it into four sections. So let's see, maybe I'll go right here for, let's see, let's look at that. There's one, two, three, four fourths. So we've divided one whole into fourths like that. And see, this would be zero fourths. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and label that, zero fourths. And then this over here must be one fourth, and then two fourths right there in the middle, and then three fourths, and then all the way up here to four fourths. Excellent. That seems to make sense. This is one fourth of a whole, this is two fourths of a whole, this is three fourths of a whole, and this is one, two, three, four fourths of a whole. Four fourths or a whole. Ah, that makes sense, because four divided by four is one. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the same thing with our unit boxes. So let's see, we're working in fourths here. So if I follow the pattern that was in the number one, what I need to do is I need to divide vertically each of our shaded areas, and I need to go ahead and fill in one fourth. Now I'm gonna do that with all of ours, just so I'm a little ahead of the game. So I'm doing a fourth, and a fourth, and a fourth, and a fourth. Apologize for my squiggly lines. Let's see, so now I'm trying to remember how we did this. So on problem number one, I think I divided, I'm gonna switch to red here, I think I divided the first one in half, right? I said, like that. And that allowed me to say, well, let's see, one fourth is the same thing as Oh, that's right, because then I, I partitioned it into two parts. So I took each of our, my fourths and I partitioned it into two parts. So that's the same as multiplying by two, so I end up with two-eighths, two-eighths. Now let's just see, does that make sense? So if I look at these parts as fourths, there's one, two, three, fourths, then one part is shaded. So that's one out of four parts is shaded. But if I look at this as eighths, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight parts, well then two of them are shaded. One, two are shaded out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So sure enough, I think I've they're proven there that one fourth is the same as two eighths. Now if I continue with my pattern, last time I partitioned in two parts, and I think on this one I'm supposed to partition into three parts. Let me do that. And that says that one fourth is the same as, let's see, well I partitioned my one times three additional parts, so let's see, so that'd be one times three, out of four times three equals, th one times three is three, four times three is 12. Does that make sense? Let's see. Again, if I think of these as fourths, one of the one, two, three, four is shaded. If I think of them as twelfths, then one, two, three out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, sure enough. So again, one fourth is the same, is equivalent to three fourths. Continuing with my pattern, if I divide it into two parts here and three parts here, I think I divide it into four parts here, so let's see. And I can go ahead with my math statement. So one-fourth is equivalent to one times four over four times four, or four over 16. Again, let me count that up. One out of four, one, two, three, four, is the same as one, two, three, four out of four, eight, 12, 16, yep. 4 out of 16. Again, two equivalent fractions, 1 fourth and 4 sixteenths. And finally, if I divided this into four parts, 
subdivided. I'll divide this one into 5. There's 5. And I would say that 1 fourth is equivalent of the 1 times 5 over 4 times 5, or 5 twentieths. Again, let me count that out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are shaded out of 5, 10, 15, 20. Yep, 5 out of 20. So 1 fourth is equivalent to 5 twentieths. So each of these is maybe a little difficult to understand in and of itself. But we did problems like this on our problem set today. Problem number one is exactly like this, except it's even a little easier. Problem two fits this pattern, and I believe problems three and four fit that pattern as well. So thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Take care.